We begin then with the latest violent confrontations between Israel and Palestinian fighters in Gaza. A sixth commander of the Islamic Jihad armed group has been killed in a targeted Israeli airstrike in central Gaza. At least 33 Palestinians and one Israeli have been killed since Tuesday. Heavy fire continues to be traded despite international calls for a truce. Well, funerals are being held for some of the Palestinians killed in the Israeli airstrikes. Angry mourners called for the armed group Islamic Jihad to escalate rocket attacks against Israel. A barrage of rockets was fired from Gaza on Friday morning, triggering warning sirens in southern Israel and an illegal settlement in the occupied West Bank. Al Jazeera's Yumna El Sayed joins us now live from Gaza. Yumna, where are you? What's happening there? Yes, Adrian, I'm here in a Nasser neighborhood. This is in the central Gaza city. It's one of the most densely populated areas in Gaza city. And um, I'm here, this is where the latest Israeli uh, airstrike, uh, it targeted a residential apartment. I'm stepping away from the frame so that you can uh, see it in camera. Now, uh, here, uh, uh, still teams of the defense teams and uh, emergency teams are still there. Uh, people have been evacuated uh, from this uh, building, though. And uh, as you can see, it's a six-story building. The targeting happened in the fifth floor. Uh, but the sixth floor and the fourth floor have been uh, widely and badly uh, um, uh, also uh, destroyed from that uh, targeting. Now, we're talking about uh, an assassination uh, also operation here where these people were not warned to get out of their homes. Uh, there was no warning. There was no uh, warning missile even fired prior to this uh, targeting. And uh, civil defense teams and medical teams have spoken about uh, uh, evacuating uh, over 10 people who have been injured. Most of them have been uh, critically or seriously injured. While uh, the health ministry has uh, confirmed two people killed from the latest uh, yeah, targeting here, bringing the number to a total of 31 people killed and over 110 injured. Yumna, six commanders of Islamic Jihad have, uh, are now dead after these targeted uh, attacks. Uh, what does this latest attack mean for the leadership of the armed group? Yes, well, we while we're we're hearing a lot of news about uh, uh, negotiations going on, international pressure going on for uh, mediation, uh, the striking has been uh, very strong today. Uh, now, with this assassination operation, we still don't know if it's just one Islamic Jihad uh, member in that uh, assassination or both were of Al Quds Brigade's uh, members. So we're still uh, trying to confirm if the number is six or even more. Uh, to be uh, killed uh, from them. But this shows that uh, there is an ongoing escalation between both sides. Uh, the firing of the, the, of the rockets has not stopped from the Gaza Strip. And this shows that uh, mediations are not going very well. Uh, it seems that uh, also the, 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 the general mood in Gaza is very tense. It's very high among the people. Uh, everyone is talking about not having uh, a very uh, fruitful negotiation of uh, uh, a very soon ceasefire, it seems. Yumna, many thanks indeed. Al Jazeera's Yumna El Sayed there, live in Gaza. Well, Villa Marx is in Ashkelon, near the border with Gaza, and has more on the situation there. We can hear some of those airstrikes in the distance above us right now. You'll hear drones throughout the course of the day. And every few minutes, there will be the sound of some interceptions by the Iron Dome defence mechanism. Every few minutes, I think, is, is a fair way of putting it. Maybe every 10, 15 minutes, you'll see some attempted rocket launches from Gaza that will be intercepted for the most part. However, not all of them being intercepted. We now know that there have been direct strikes of rockets on homes in the city of Starot, just a few kilometres away from me. Yesterday, we had strikes very close to us here. They seem now to be much more focused on Sterot. It does seem a number of homes there have been damaged. They have said over the course of the last 24 hours, the Israeli military and the Israeli government, they are in a position to strike back. Local media reporting that what they'd like to see, and this is according to Channel 12 here, one of the major uh, news stations here in Israel, they'd like to see, this is Mr Netanyahu's aim, to try and end the leadership of Islamic Jihad, to continue to target the commanders as they have been for the last few days.
Let's uh, speak to Jennifer Austin. She's Deputy Director of Operations in the Gaza Field Office for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, or UNRWA. She joins us now live uh, via Skype from Gaza. Good to have you with us, uh, Jennifer. Uh, how has this escalation Thanks, in Mike. violence impacted upon UNRWA's operations in Gaza, food distribution, health and sanitation services and so on? Well, thanks, Adrian. And as you're aware, we're now into day four of the ongoing escalation and the humanitarian situation is already dire. Um, from UNRWA's perspective, we've been continuing our food program, our food distribution, um, our sanitation in the camps, um, our health centres, 22 health centres are still operating, um, our water wells. We're trying to keep as much operations going as we can. Um, but it's a really bad situation coming on top of 15 years of blockade, of uh, physical, economic and social blockade and actually the coping mechanisms of the people here, of the refugees, is very dire. The situation is dire here. You, Thank you. You must be pretty concerned about the safety and security of your people working on the ground there. And, and what is the mood of the general population there in Gaza right now? What are people telling you? Um, well, people here are not very hopeful um, and, and the people here are are really at the, as I said, that they're at the end of their coping mechanisms. They have actually, um, this is how they feel, Adrian. What is UNRWA calling on all parties involved to do right now? Uh, and what's its message to the international community? Well, UNRWA is calling on all parties to cease, and, and there should be a ceasefire, of course, and we've been waiting for the cease, hearing about a ceasefire for a long time now, for a few days. We're calling on all parties to protect all civilians, um, in particular children and women have been particularly affected by this. Um, it's a really um, humanitarian disaster in the making. Tell us, Jennifer, tell us, Jennifer, more about, about what UNRWA is actually doing there on the ground in, in, uh, in, okay. in Gaza. What's, what's it, what does it, its work entail? Well, UNRWA is providing humanitarian assistance for the um, um, Palestinian refugees in Gaza. So that's the 1.7 million refugees. And at the moment, um, as I said, we are running... Uh, we, our schools are not operating. So there's 291,000 children are not going to school uh, because it's too dangerous. We don't, we've, we don't have safety to be able to send our children to school. So there's the, the Gazan children. So um, we're offering schools, um, health care in 22 health centres, uh, relief and social services. Um, we've had a big uptake in the um, uh, first aid hotlines for psychological health. There's a huge mental health gap here and there's a big mental health crisis. So I think that's how the humanitarian situation is going, Adrian. But as far as what UNRWA is doing as well, we're actually um, prepared um, if this situation goes further. We have got um, our emergency plans in place, our protocols in place. We have um, a scale, we can scale up for 150,000 displaced persons if that happens. We've got emergency food and non-food um, ready for those people. If they feel unsafe, we've got people coming into our shelters because they're feeling unsafe at night or maybe their shelter was destroyed. So it's a really um, dangerous situation for the people of Gaza. And they don't feel safe. Where can they go to be safe? They're coming to the UNRWA schools, coming to our designated emergency shelters, and that's where they're getting safety. Really good to talk to you, Jennifer. Many thanks indeed for being with us. Uh, Jennifer Austin there, live thanks, from Gaza.